Welcome everyone. Today we're going to have a guide for Watson, and this guide is going to be everything you need to know about Watson. Well, majority the best things to know about Watson. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a few of the talents and the skill combinations with the talents. After that, we'll go through some of the theory crafting or the knowledge I have in the end game, and testing multiple offline accounts, online accounts, and just testing with lots of builds. So, what do we know about Watson? is the game currently goes into the end game after you finish the campaign and you'll be at around level 40 and after that you basically go up to the you know the two things one is you want to get your productivity going and you want to unlock a few things i can make a special guide for this if you guys want but the key part is to actually unlock a bit of the productivity when you achieve at the start and then you should be going for some of the outcomes with the increase of magic find increase of gold and then consider if you need to go for duplicate of spells so definitely look into those and i can make a full guide on that Ooh, so much talking and after that you should be going for expedition you should start with 43 you first play the adapt after finishing that make sure you finish three fights so basically you don't teleport to town you teleport further to go to the one after and one after so after that go for 43 and each three fights you won you progress you to the next one this goes a lot further all the way up to ascendant with 187 as well you can modify those and if you modify five times you can also lower down tinted keep in mind if you do lower down tinted you actually don't get your progression of the map so if you lower it at 163 the monster will be spawned at 163 but you won't progress to 166 upon killing the boss keep that in mind so after the basics how do you get the choices of skills or what skills and combination do you look for right at the start most of us do know there's a few combination that's really good which is time cannot heal which time cannot heal this one actually has the status debuff and after enemies are debuffed by status you do 120 percent more damage so how do you consistently get status debuff other than a skill that has status added to spells or with attack spell with status added to attack spells which is added damage we can look for those three spells i'll show you guys the three spells so the first spells is going to be a ranger spell with a, with a death gazer second spell is going to be a warrior spell with the tracker switch the last one we have will be a mage spell that should should be debuffing enemies and there isn't a guaranteed debuff so what the mage tends to do is they just debuff enemies with the spells usually you want a spell that is added damage based which is this one anomaly you always debuff enemy with status with a percentage and eventually you get to debuff them but with the ranger and also i need to get a gun yeah i got a gun so with the ranger you can actually debuff enemy by having this one just one perk into the death skater they death gazer you can debuff enemy with status and similarly you can also debuff enemies with my tracker switch what's here right <laughs> let's grab it grab your trackers you can debuff enemies with tracker switch and this is for status as well that's not tracker switch this is tracker switch what's happening here we are so we do have a perk here the 100 percent debuff enemy will take this so here with tracker switch you can actually just hook the enemy and whoever's on the line of the hook will be debuffed this is your force, first source of additional damage onto enemies. It's 120%. It can stack further as well because during the duration of the debuff, if you stack more damage, enemy will actually take incredible amount of instance of damage because after 1.5 seconds, they take more damage. This is definitely a perk for almost every class. Second to that, although this is very reachable, very achievable, the next one will be limited towards the warrior and ranger type of class that uses rage ability. When you actually pick into the Child of Frenzy, going for Furious Appetite and also Frenzy Blow, you will be doing double damage for the spells that's cast over rage at 750. In order to guarantee that you are actually over rage 750, what people tend to do is they get 400 additional rage and willpower by picking those three. They also get 150 more willpower and rage by picking this one. So you're sitting on 1550. If you still don't find yourself with enough rage, you can consider getting the perk that if you take damage, 25 damage per hit taken. There's also a perk over here that gives us more rage. So this one gives another 10% rage for hit taken. So you can effectively take 35 rage for each time you get attacked. Even if you block, you still take the rage. So this can maintain you over the rage of 750. You can, of course, 
get the Rage Potion and use Double Rage Potion. So before you cast a spell, just pop the potion and repeat this way. There is also a lot of perks that goes with Rage that increase your damage if you have higher Rage. For example, this one gives you 2% damage for 100 unconsumed Rage. You usually sit over 750, that's 15% more damage and sometimes even further. On top of that, if you kill enemy with this perk, you also get 35 rage additional upon killing enemy. So this is a great rage combination. If you're seeing a warrior guide, we really recommend this one. As for the warriors, if you also having having trouble with finding additional rage on you know not finding enough rage, what you can look for is you can look for stats on the gears, which I'll try to show you guys one of them. A little messy here, of course. So this is the one. So if you look into the shoulder. If you're still short on rage or if you're still going over under 750, you can take the rage and willpower cost reduction. You can have these stats on the shoulders, so two of them, and on the gloves. This actually reduces rage by a lot. You'll be spending 300 rage first spell, now you spend about 100 each first spell. And this means you can almost keep yourself indefinite casting. Now that we spoke about the warriors and rangers additional source of damage, let's look into the mages for additional damage. For the majors, there is actually one that's over. Oh, the other person. It should be over here, right? Yeah, it's over here. It's hiding. So the mage has the combination of curse and occult damage. Three of the mage spells are occult damage, which include ether damage, shadow damage, and secret damage. So by debuffing enemies with a curse stack, which you can do so by having a shadow debuff, shadow damage debuff, or you can use the mark of impurity to debuff enemies. So each curse stack increases the mage's occult damage by seven percent. This stacks up up to 30% or 30 times, so that's 210% additional damage. So I have had a build with Curse Mages, and you guys can still look into that. It's still very variable for the early games. Late games, you can go for Element and Curse Mages. So by simply having a source of debuff onto enemies with Curse, you increase your damage dealt with the occult damage. And the spells that use occult damage are over, uh, over here. Let's have a look at the spells. So. The Occult Damage uses Infinity Blade, this is the Occult Damage, guaranteed. The Anomaly is Occult Damage, Annihilation is also Occult Damage. Those are the base Occult Damage spells, but you can also convert more spells into Occult Damage by having Spell Damage onto your gears. You can have that with the Amulet and the Weapon. The Rings only gives Elemental added Damage, and usually it's Flat Damage. Here with Weapons, you can Socket for Offensive 2 for Spell Damage. Similarly, you can get some on the Belts as well. So that's the source of bonus damage for mages. So what about if you want to try all the builds, what's a good source of bonus damage? And that will be for the elements. How this element work is that you only debuff enemy with one element. For example, if I go into attack spells, let me show you guys attack spells, <laughs> clicking on the hotkeys. So currently I only have one element, which is rend. That means this is the highest element of rend for my attack spells, and I'll be debuffing enemies with bleeding them bleeding element. So if you look over here, my normal attack does bleeding. Now if I happen to have a weapon that gives me something else, where can I find one? Should have prepared this one a little earlier, right? Let's have a look. This will do. This has fire and bleed. So we're gonna sweep this one. Now what's gonna happen is you can see now I have rend and fire. So my auto attack Excuse me. So now my auto attack now have the burning and also bleeding element because those are the top two for the physical damage added to attacks. And this is only for attack spells. And normal attack is attack, and also any spells that uses the rage will consider as an attack spell. How do I get two elements? Is with this particular perk, with the Capitalist with Grievous Affliction. This gives me another element. Usually you can only apply one. This allows us to apply the top two element. And after this, I can actually look into combination of applying elements. There's a few tricks to apply elements you might not have. I'll show you guys those. So for example, this is a good one. This is also a really good one. Where is the cannon? Hey, where's my cannon? <laughs> Cannon's over there, right? This is cannon. There you go. So what are the tricks? Right now, I only apply debuffs with burn and bleeding. What if I want to apply more debuffs? The golem itself is a toxic golem, so if you happen to have a golem, if you pick this perk, now the golem can normal attack and debuff enemy with toxic. If you adjust again, let's say if you want the golem to be a shadow warrior, which should debuff enemies with curses, so this golem is now a curse warrior, so he will debuff enemy with curses. 
Similarly, I can turn the golem into a lightning mage, a debuff enemy with lightning. So the golem can adjust variety for any of the debuffs you want, just with the shadow, with lightning, and also with toxic, which is the poison. After that, if you still have you know more debuffs to debuff enemies, you can go with lightning. You can convert this tower, which currently does burn and bleeding, which we have with you know other spells, because those are the highest. You can convert that physical into shock. So now all of a sudden this turret is doing shock damage. Now I can have one additional element with the golden, one additional element with the cannon, and two elements with the weapon and the attack spells. So you might be asking, why do you want so many debuffs? Because for this pack, the Immortal Offering is currently the strongest attack increase spells in the game. After killing an enemy that is debuffed, you gain 5% increased damage for each type of element. You can stack 5 times. That is 25% additional damage for each element, and you'll be looking at at least 4, 5, or even 7 elements. When I was having 7 elements times that by 5 times that by 5%, I was doing how much am I doing? I'm doing over 350% more damage, and that is a multiplier. So, you know, I could triple my damage. That's how we can achieve millions of damage, you know, 50 million, 100 million with those combinations. So, Immortal Offering means you want to debuff enemies more. In order to achieve more debuff chances, we're actually sacrificing a bit of damage to have two additional elements stacked onto enemies. So this way when they die, they actually are taking at least five debuffs. So when they die, they have at least five debuffs on them and they die and then we get the damage. Also we want to debuff enemies with more maximum stacks. You can have 10 maximum stacks at the start, but after picking those two perks, you have 20 maximum stacks. And if you pick those two perks, those give us another 10 maximum stacks, so we'll be looking at 30 maximum stacks, which is great for a debuff mage, which wants the debuff of curses to 30 stacks. Other things can also be great here. So this is also a really good pick for the late game. Now, one small question I often get is how do you make sure you have the spells that are debuffing enemies? So if you happen to have a catalyst, you can also be a spellcaster. In order to have the spells as debuffing enemies, you have to know one thing. The spells have a deep default element. So the default here for anomaly is status. You can only add another source of element. You can't change status unless the spell says you can change it. I'll give you guys an example. So the best example will be the free spell over here. Let's put it here. Currently, my major source of added spell damage is shadow. Notice this is about spells added damage and it's a flat damage. This means my secondary element chance will be shadow, which will be a curse spell. Notice this is a free spell. Currently, no, this is a free spell. It has free changes and also it has curse chances, curse chances because I have a shadow added to my damage. Now, because the freeze and curse is two elements, and if I happen to have another freeze chance to proc, I can remove the freeze by changing the whole free spell into a fire spell. Those are the perks allows you to manipulate the spells into different elements in order to get you know six or seven elements onto the enemies and increase your damage down. Usually you just take the spells in combination with everything you're missing. So with warriors I'm having burn and bleeding, so I don't need burn anymore. I can have curse and freeze. Now I have four elements. With toxic I have five. With the lightning shock we have six. And I can even go further with status because I know that Although the anomaly is going to have the curse as well because I have added shadow damage, its default spell is status. So this allows me to have 7 debuffs with the combination here. Of course, that's considering if I don't use tracker switch. If I use tracker switch, I don't even need status. So how many maximum debuffs can you have on an enemy? You can have maximum 8, I believe. So different debuffs. You can have stun, poison, bleeding, burn, freeze, shock, status, weakness, and curse. Actually, more than 8, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, oh yes. Stun is not a guarantee. Usually spell stuns enemies and it's only for 2 seconds and you can't stack stun. So we don't consider that as a part of the element group. Usually we just go for the 8 over here. And for the 8, if you want to get weakness onto enemies, there is a spell that allows us to do that, which is going to be the secret spell. Here's the bulk of done and we also have the the secret with solar fall. Those are the secret spells and they have the weakness stacks, as you can see. And the weakness stacks is going to be the eighth source of debuff against enemies. We can have it here. We can all have this one. So notice this is a secret spell. 
is majority in secret damage and no matter what, as long as the secret damage it will do weakness debuffs. So let's look into the next part of the talent tree. What else can we add damage or add defensive capacities to ourselves? Another source of great damage is going to be critical damage. This is always added and this depends on critical chance rate. Usually you get critical chance by adding to ferocity and the gear itself can give you critical chance. So ferocity increases my critical chance and this also depending on my critical chance score, which is depending on the gears you have, which can add critical chance. The gear like this adds 120 critical chance. If I drop this, so I'll show you currently I'm sitting on 61% critical chance. If I put it down, I'm sitting on 57%. So I lose about 4% critical chance by losing one of the gears. <laughs> my, my inventory is so full, I had to drop it. So the critical chance do stack up. You do want a few basic critical chance so you can multiply further with ferocity. On top of that, you can go for packs like those that increase 60% critical chance score. It doesn't increase critical chance, by the way. So this in return gives about 6% critical chance. And the small packs around that gives critical damage which can in return give you high damage as you critical. There's also spell perks that give you critical chances, which are really good. After that, there's a lot of the small and interesting perks that give us more damage. For example, if you have more enemies next to you, sometimes you have over 10 enemies, this can be great. 4% per enemy, you can even go to 5% per enemy. And this is a multiplier, I believe. After that, because you're debuffing enemies with a slow, which is status, you can also you know, freeze enemies or stun enemies. You increase their damage taken by 25%. This is a multiplier, a really good point if you want to go for additional damage. And on top of that, I believe there is one more over here. Yes, this one is when you only have one enemies around you, you do 25% more damage. The downside is I tend to want more enemies around me to do explosions, to do other things, and I don't go for this one. But if you're going for like a solo build just versus one or two unit, then you get them down quickly, this is not bad. After that, you might want to look into some defensive capacities. There are a few really good ones, which we'll point out. The first one is well known by the Dire Injection. This one means you can't get one-shotted. You only take 40% damage right away. Then after that, you take the rest of it after. And you do lose a bit of maximum health, but it's okay. The good thing is you can life steal it back. You can also use potions. You can use the globes to regen HP, which will touch on the method of regen. Potions is definitely the last sort of resort to get life because you have so much life. Potions don't do much. The best way to get life is from life steal. There's a perk for that. You can also get the gears that give you life steal. Life steal with enough damage done will make you super tanky and nothing can kill you as long as you're doing damage. But what if the monsters are evading and monsters are jumping, you can't get to them? This is when you go for the globe chances. With well, only 4% globe chance here and also the pickup globe by 15 radius. I'll be picking up lots of globes and those actually heals me for a lot. If you're also going for about a force shield, you can take the 25% force shield recharge and for the first shield mage, we have lots of force shield. While picking up globes, you can also pick up resistance, which is another form of defense. There's three forms of defense with resistance, which reduces all, all damage from all sorts of damage. So it reduces magical, range, physical, everything. There's also block chances. With block chances, you can reduce damage by depending on the block efficiency. If your block efficiency is 15, this is what I have. If my block efficiency is 17 at the moment, I will actually reduce incoming damage at 23% chance. So to block a chance when I block a damage. And if I block any damage, it will be reduced by 17%. It's possible to get block efficiency to 75% and block chance to 100%, but it's not that effective because it costs too much and you really need a good shield. So what most people do is they get resistance over 70%, they get a bit of block for offensive and defensive, and then they go for another source of defense. Another source of defense can be in the form of liver mortis because the golem will share part of your damage. Yes, the golem will die, but this golem is sitting on about 1.4 million HP, and it's likely the golem won't be dying you know, that quickly. That perk for a bit more threat gaining and a bit more like HP, this can be a even tankier. So having one to golem to share damage will be great because this also is a multiplication factor to reduce damage. After that, what else will protect us is going to be this one. This is one of my favorite perks. I picked this for almost all my late game builds. 
the Salvator Anchor is a massive amount of text to read. All you have to know is this is really good on the Bruiser gear. So Bruiser helmet and Bruiser chest, it gives you life regen and the Bruiser has lots of HP. It's incredibly good on the heavy gears on the helmet and also on the chest. So what I mean by that is, let's look at the gears. If you look into the chest, the chest piece on top there, you can see under it says heavy. If it's a heavy chest, it can roll into all resistance and percentage all resistance. Similarly for the helmet, it can roll into resistance, double resistance. And those resistance are actually doubled by the particular perk. Let me show you, if I lose my helmet, I lose about 5000 resistance. If I lose the chest, I lose all my resistance. So just having those two pieces alone is actually giving me 77% reduction to all damage. And that is a massive one. So just those two pieces, because I have so many ways to multiply resistance. I have the picking up a life globe, increased 40% resistance. I have lots of resistance perks over here. And there's other things that multiply resistance. Lastly, there are a few things that people used to use at the start that's really good for leveling, but I stopped perking for those in the end game. One is going to be the tenant points. Where did they go? It's over here. There we go. So by picking over here, you go to the Exorcist, you go for the Brandy Burst, and go for the Indifference, you will get 5 tenor points. After having 5 tenor points, you, you will reduce the first source of income damage by 100%, then the next source by 80%. The tenor points are restored every 2.5 seconds, so it's really good to keep yourself mobile to dodge a few damage, and this allows you to not get one-shotted right off. This is great initially, but after when you get to the end game over level 70, you tend to stand in a group of enemies and this becomes useless. So initially you tend to kill things fast enough, they can't one shot you, you life steal the story and just kills everything. But in the later games you just face tank everything and you no longer need this one. So it's definitely an optional one, I was taking this a lot at the start. I believe this is everything we can share about the source of the talent tree. There's a lot of things I can share with the what to do with over here with the end game of the productivity and also what stats to look for and lastly you know what are the tips for finding items and farming things but i think this will make the guide too long so i think those are the most important parts and we'll go from there if you like if you like this guide definitely leave a comment let me know and follow and subscribe onto youtube i'll be making more guides for austin and depending on the feedback we can adjust the different type of guides let me know what you think guys Thank you so much for watching. This is quite long of a guide. I'm pretty tired, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you, thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time.